Hello, I'm here today to talk to you about the article, The Corner Store. We're moving right along in our 099 class, so great job everyone so far. Um, so as usual, I'm going to read the first couple of paragraphs of The Corner Store aloud to you, and then um, it will be your job to continue annotating. And the type of annotation that you're going to do this time is a vocab annotation, which simply means that in the margins, in addition to anything else you might want to write, um, any comments or connections, or even lack of connections that you have, you should write the vocab words that you don't know. Okay, so I'm going to be checking to see that you've done a vocab annotation. And for this video, I have a very special guest. A fraggle. You may be asking yourself, why does Professor Cadenis have a fraggle with her for this video? Well, we are going to be talking about the concept of nostalgia, which means reminiscing for the past. And when I was a kid, I loved, 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 loved the show Fraggle Rock, right? So I recently obtained this fraggle to help me be nostalgic remembering the time when things were a little bit easier and I could watch Fraggle Rock. So here's a Fraggle, F-R-A-G-G-L-E. I'll ask you about the Fraggle in the video quiz. All right, so here's a Fraggle um, to represent nostalgia and we're gonna see what Eudora Welty, our author, has to say about a corner store. As you know from the pre-reading video, um, she's uh, an older woman, right? At this point she has died, um, but she, is reminiscing about a time when she was a kid, right? And went to the corner store. So I'm sure that we all know corner stores um, in Philadelphia. So they still exist, but they're a totally different thing than what Eudora Welty is talking about. So as you um, listen and continue reading, think about what relates to your knowledge of a corner store and what's something that's a little bit more old school maybe. Okay, so the corner store, by Eudora Welty. Our little store rose right up from the sidewalk, standing in a street of family houses. It alone hadn't any yard in front, any tree or flower bed. It was a plain frame building covered over with brick. Above the door, a little railed porch ran across on an upstairs level, and four windows with shades were looking out. But I didn't catch on to those. So in the very first paragraph, just like you might write in your essay, you might write a first paragraph that's about what something looks like on the outside. Eudora Welty talks about what it looks like on the outside of this store. Okay, and I want to highlight um, for this annotation, again, I'm going to click review, right? And I want to highlight um, some interesting ways that she conveys her information. It alone hadn't any yard in front. So you can say, um, talks about what's not there in addition to what is there, right? And then maybe we'll, we can, you know, make a comment about this, but I didn't catch on to the windows, right? She's talking about what's there and what she didn't see as a child. And in that very first paragraph, there really aren't any vocab words um, from my perspective that you would need to define. Certainly, um, if, you, if there are any words in this paragraph that feel complicated to you, define them, okay? But so far, not really any words. Okay, next paragraph, we certainly have some words. So the next paragraph says, running in out of the sun, you met what seemed total obscurity inside. There were almost tangible smells Licorice recently sucked in a child's cheek, dill pickle brine that had leaked through a paper sack in a fresh trail across the wooden floor, ammonia-loaded ice that had been hoisted from wet crocker sacks and slammed into the ice box with its sweet butter and the door, and <laughs> sweet butter at the door, and perhaps the smell of still untrapped mice. Untrapped mice. Gross, right? Um, so this paragraph is all about the smells in the store. 
it's a really good kind of easy organizational pattern that she's using that you can use too. You just write about a different sensory aspect of a place um, in each paragraph. First one is about the visuals on the exterior. Next one is about the smells. Okay, so let's do a little bit of a vocab annotation and then you can continue doing um, a vocab annotation as well as any other kind of annotation that you want. I'm only checking for vocab, so that's all you have to do, but you might want to do some writing like we did here um, to sort of build your understanding of the article. So here we have the word obscurity, right? And that means, uh, obscure means unclear, so lack of clarity. Right, so it looked when she went inside, it seemed like everything was all mixed up, right? Um, tangible smells. Tangible means you can touch it, so can almost touch it. What does it mean for something to be, you can almost touch it? What does that mean? Well, it means that it's so strong, it's almost like you could reach out and touch the smells. Pickle brine, it's basically the... Uh, pickle juice, right? Okay, and I think that that's pretty much all we need for this paragraph. So basically, she's talking about everything that could be smelled on the in on the inside, right? Though the child had just eaten the pickle juice, uh, the ice from the ice box right before there were refrigerators there was like a, a, a block of ice right that people used um, to preserve food there's the smell of the untrapped mice and the butter okay so we're getting a good sense of all the specific details she's using to talk about this store all right so you're going to continue on your own to read the rest of this article And then when you're done, um, you can answer the questions here. And um, it, I believe that everything will be self-explanatory. Just remember that the word nostalgic means reminiscing about the past, okay? And nostalgic usually has positive connotations. It's a positive word. As always, if you have any questions, let me know. I'm very, very happy to help you.